talking about uh, navigating relationships through mental illness and trauma but first what is pure love <laughs> pure love is an honest conversation between parent and child unicorn and mermaid about how we navigate life relationships sex sexuality everything how we've grown together and continue to grow and i guess kind of give tips and advice for other guardian child duos yeah all right well, um, this is also a topic that both of us kind of came up with because we uh, both have mental illnesses and we navigate this every single day. <laughs> and I have gotten a lot better at it because obviously I'm older and I've had more time and my daughter is still like going through it. And so I like to be a big support for her, uh, especially when I can, right? Um, and we wanted to put it in the context of relationships, like our relationship and then like I guess romantic or other kinds of relationships like how how do we do that and this looks different for everyone um, depending on what it is that you're going through or living with and uh, also uh, what support you have what kind of relationships you have like it, it changes so again this is not a cookie cutter model this is just us um, you know sharing and storytelling about um, our experiences so um, yeah so in terms of mental illness and stuff like what um how do you fall in that spectrum well i'm diagnosed with depression and anxiety um which is what they're two very conflicting illnesses so it's very mm. exhausting <laughs> it is it's a lot to deal with and even though i like to think it isn't it's a huge part of my personality mm -hmm. and i have um uh, anxiety disorder, um, PTSD, and um, and depression, but I would say not as much as you um, um, experience it. Um, but anxiety is like right up there. Number and, one. Yeah. Anxiety. It's like my whole life is anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> and PTSD really, really informs my entire life, actually. Uh, so going through that and um almost almost six years ago i became sober and being sober now has i don't want to say it's added something but it's definitely uncovered the things that i was uh covering up so there's a lot of things that i'm dealing with for the first time um that's really uh challenging also beautiful because i'm i'm like you know going through my stuff and i'm dealing with them now but uh i'm finding that um I do horrible around crowds, which is an interesting thing when you're a person who, you know, speaks publicly for a living. Uh, and uh, I also experience um, this kind of sensory overload um, and, and high anxiety attacks when um, I can, it feels like I can smell, see, hear everything. Overstimulated. Um, and it's just too much. So kind of those things that we're dealing with and... Uh, my PTSD uh, stems from uh, a variety of things, from a child sexual abuse, rape as a teenager, and uh, also uh, a myriad of things, right, that we experience as poor uh, people, people of color, uh, queer, trans, all that good stuff. So uh, this is, I think this is like uh, our frame, like kind of the stuff that we have to be thinking about and also like what we um, need to be negotiating when we're in relationships, right? So it's funny talking about relationships. So what kind of a relation? What kind of relationships do you have, want, desire? Because I think they're very different from mine. I well, romantically, I don't have very healthy relationships. I I desire a healthy relationship, um, but um, I don't know. I feel like it's a some of it's because of me and my stuff, and then obviously because of the other person. Um, obviously. Obvious. 
But I, I know that my mental illness and some, my way of thinking or my inner dialogue or things like that can interfere and, you know, sometimes make things a little rough. Um, my anxiety, uh, confidence, things like that always definitely come into play a lot when it comes to any type of relationship. Mm. Um, when it comes to trust, too, um, when you have that paranoia all the time and just rolling in your head, somebody's mm. better than you, prettier than you, smarter than you, you know, that whole going down the deep hole with depression, like, why would anybody want you? What's so good about you? Why mm. won't they leave? So that definitely plays into it, and it, it makes it unhealthy, um, be, especially if you're, like, a people pleaser uh, as yeah. on top of that. So you, and then being somebody who wants to nurture and heal others, you tend to attract the right. other broken people, and then it just it sucks the life out of you. So that mm. tends to be my pattern sometimes. Yeah, I try to, I want to help other people, I feel like it's in a way trying to help myself, like yes. because they're something like you know they're rougher on the edges, but I'm proving to them that someone can still love them. It's like maybe somebody one day right. will love me the way that I'm loving this person. Mm. It's like mirror images over here because that was <laughs> me in my twenties as well, and it was like um, I had like a, a running joke. I was like, "Do I have like a sign on my forehead that says, that says right, going. if you're an asshole or if you're you know like." And I'm putting this in quotes. If you're broken, if you have, if you're abusive, um, yeah, manipulative. If, if someone abused you, if you, yeah, all of the things. I was like, come see me, come yeah. see me. I'm your person. I'm your person because I'm going to love you no matter what, and I'm despite anything. And it was at my own expense, right? For healers. Like, I I think that I wanted the same thing. I was like, I want to love you the way I want somebody to love me, or in my case, I think because of the abuse, um, that's the way that I show love. Like I'm going to. I'm going to give you everything um, so that you uh, will want me. Mm -hmm. I right. do that, too. That stems from my abandonment issues with all my daddy issues. I'm like, if they like, maybe I can do something that'll make them stay because mm. clearly I'm not enough. So I have to continue to do these things to make someone stay. Because I'm like, if my dad can't stay, then why would anybody else? Hmm. So that was always a huge cloud over my head whenever dealing with people. Like, eventually this is going to end. They're all going to leave. Like. Mm -hmm. Why even try to get into it? And then it's like I push them away and not like wanting to, but I'm just like, it's all going to end eventually. You're mm -hmm. just going to find someone prettier than me. So why even put effort into it? Mm -hmm. And then I push people away and then it's my fault. So mm -hmm. I think as an adult, I'm the person who does the glass half uh, full and you are still navigating glass half empty because I, I know that when we're when we're helping each other out and you're telling me about stuff I'm like see the positive side of things mm -hmm. and I know that that's easier said than done um, and I also think that one of the reasons maybe I'm wrong but one of the reasons why you actually listen to me more so is because I too struggle with you know like depression anxiety and yeah stuff. it's so, hard to take advice from people who have no idea how you feel right. i have friends who are constantly like why don't you just and i'm like why don't you just don't because <laughs> you don't understand i saw a facebook post about that too like things to not like things not to say to your friend if they're depressed or anxious like oh just maybe you just need to go outside get some air feel better like Maybe if you weren't so lazy or something like that. Mm. And it's like, these things are not helping. And you, you're a person who doesn't deal with this. So for you, it can be a regular sadness. But right. for me, it's a deep, dark hole that I'll be in for a month. And I can't control it. So I'm like, it's not like I want to be in my room all day. But yeah. this is what happens. Right, right. It's so hard. It's so hard. I think I started understanding that in you more. I mean, I, always, I, think, I, was, I think I've always tried... And it at most times been successful in supporting you and being there for you. But I think it really got to a deeper sense of understanding for me once I got sober. Um, because I went to the depths of my anxiety and depression then because it was the first time that I really, I mean really, really allowed myself to feel those things. And I didn't know that I was doing that. I actually did not, I had no idea that I was... Um, self-medicating i thought i was just having a good time and hanging out with friends and because i got pregnant with you at such a young age i was so good so good you know taking care of you breastfeeding being a good mother doing all of these things so i think when i hit my 30s is when i went buck the fuck wild and i was catching up on things that i hadn't done in a long time and it, it caught up with me i mean and not to mention that 
you know, in our family there is uh, mental health issues and there's also... Substance um, abuse issues, addiction. Yes, yes. So, so I always had that in the back of my mind, you know, like, be Me careful, too. be careful, be careful. And then, you know, and then it happened. And then um, through my wonderful chosen family networks and um, having accountability processes, I... Um, decided that I was going to be sober and there began the really deep work and then also almost something clicking even deeper for me um, because of course with parents I think for me as a parent you try even if you don't understand you try right but now there was a deeper sense of understanding uh, around the depression piece and stuff and the anxiety oh shit I mean that <laughs> And you know, like, it's just my luck that with the high level of functioning anxiety that I have, I live in the most anxiety inducing city block <laughs> yes. neighborhood on the planet, besides Tokyo, Japan. <laughs> I live in Grand Central, Times Square, whatever. So every day, I just, it's, I'm like, I don't even it's know how to describe people. it. It's the smells, the sounds, the people, it's just, it's mm -hmm. so much, so much, so early in the morning. As soon as I walk up to go to work, I'm just like, <laughs> I want to go home. <laughs> so then, how does all of this that's inside of us, like how does this translate into relationship stuff? And I think, um, I think it translates for me in a lot of different ways. Uh, it's around trust, and also big time, it's about control. Mm -hmm. I think for me, uh, I know very clearly that I am a control freak, and I need control. It's that's clear for me. I have no qualms about it, and I will not. Um, you know, lie to myself and say that I'm not a control freak. I think a lot, well, I'll rephrase that. I think there are many survivors um, in which um, control is a factor, right? Because so control was taken away from us, and mm -hmm. so it's a big factor in trying to gain that control. So um, my relationships in the, in the past, when they were very, very unhealthy, were I gave up control constantly to other people because I didn't want conflict. Yes. Right? yes. No conflict. Yeah. I don't want to fight. I don't want to fight. I don't want conflict. So I'm just going to defer to you. And for a while that worked, right? Because I really wasn't tapping into my own stuff or what I wanted or who I was. Um, and now um, it's more of a give and take. And I want to be really, now I'm very, very intentional. So I'm polyamorous and I'm kinky. All right. So I've been in the kinky community for almost 20 years or actually 20 years. And I've been polyamorous for about the same amount of time. So polyamorous, for those who don't know, is the theory and practice. For some people, it's, it's theory, and then you know practice comes later. But theory and practice of the ability to, the ability to love or have multiple relationships with people where um, it is consensual, it is um, known, it is not cheating, it is not lying, it is a way of living, a way of life, a way of loving, a way of having relationships. So... That has absolutely worked for me, and I think it's worked for me in a lot of ways. So for in terms of my kinky relationships, currently um, I am a dominant to someone who submits to me. And that is a beautiful relationship because it's so logical. It's so clear. Everything is known. I know my role. She knows her role. And together we came we came to that decision together and at any moment she can opt out of it I can opt out of it we can reconfigure it we can do all that so for me around the the idea of control works really nicely in the kink world for me because it's, it's consensual control it, it's absolutely consensual and and everything is not it's not a, a surprise right Every, I, everything is known uh, and the, being polyamorous I really love it because I get different things from different people and I think for a long time I made myself small and compartmentalized myself for people um, even when I had desires and other ideas around what relationships were I was just kind of falling in what the majority said that monogamy heterosexuality is the way to be and in my polyamory I really like it I love it because I'm able to be my full self all over the place right um, and as a fluid person, you know, I'm very masculine at some points, very feminine at others. Um, I, um, you know, uh, wear women's clothing, wear men's clothing. I'm very fluid, right? And so with my different, the different people in my life, I'm able to express those things. So no part of me is hidden. 
uh, push down or anything. I express my true self. And that is a gift, especially as a fluid person, because a lot of people don't understand that, uh, what it means to be that. Yeah. What about you? Um, hmm. Well, I'm monogamous. Um, a very uh, strict monogamous person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I'm like any, I feel like I'm, that's the only thing I'm conservative in mm -hmm. is in my monogamy. Cause, uh, and I think that stems from a lot of stuff from my life as well. That I'm just like, if it's me and you, it's me and you. Fuck everybody else. Don't look over there. <laughs> or if you do, just be discreet about it. Cause we're all gonna look. Right, but right. Don't make me know that this is happening. You know, like I just, <laughs> I have very like, I have boundaries and rules that I just like. But I mean, it's not like I'm impossible. But it's just like I, the things that I have dealt with or the things that I have felt, I have to create these boundaries to prevent these feelings from coming again. Um, whether it's me preventing something or I'm asking you to prevent something, but mm -hmm. I, I like the idea of being with just one person and I don't, you know, shun or look, turn my nose up at any other like way of loving and living. Mm -hmm. Um, no, you've been totally supportive of the way I live my life from the get. My whole mm -hmm. thing is all about, um, Things being consensual, being honest, communication, trust, loyalty, things like that. And that can come in many forms, whether you're monogamous or not. Um, but I'm a fiercely loyal person and that's, that's I don't true. I don't tolerate, you know, betrayal or things like that. Um, I don't know. And that makes me a, a black and white person when it comes to stuff like that. I don't know. I guess mm. I think that stems from my donor or stuff like that, too, <laughs> that I'm just like, no, no, I'm not tolerating this. Mm. So... I'm trying to um, be better at it because I know when you meet certain people or you feel like you can't do better or whatever the case is, you'll you'll silence yourself and mm. act like things don't bother you or things don't irk you or that doesn't hurt you because you just want to have things be calm. But right. that's something I have to work on because I'd rather argue with me, tell you what's going on than me sit there and be miserable and just die a little bit every day because mm. I'm holding it in and you're still right. doing the same thing. Right. So I'm still learning how to be vocal more right. Right. and not worry about whether it'll make them mad enough to go because if that's the case, then you could just stay gone. Right. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I always say like one of the hardest things is not to lead with fear. And that it is really hard, uh, but sometimes when we're scared of something, we allow that to lead us. And then sometimes we end up in the place that we don't want to be in because we're being led by that fear. Right? Mm -hmm. So I work with that all the time. Um, the way the way that my mental illness shows up in relationships or how I navigate relationships is really around my self-care. <laughs> it really is around my self-care. Like not ignoring when I need to have my alone time, when I need to meditate. Um, when I am having an anxiety attack and I cannot show up fully, right? Rather than saying, oh, it's okay, it's okay, I'm just gonna go, I don't wanna disappoint them, I wanna just show up and then screw, like just screw myself. And that's, that's the behavior I did in the beginning in my survivorship. It's like, fuck you, take care of them. Fuck you, take care of them. And with, um, with understanding my mental illness really has gotten me to tap in deeper to what does it mean to take care of myself. And I think we, we throw around the word self-care a lot, right? It's like, take care of yourself, self-care. And I like to think of care as self and community care, right? Because there are moments when I actually can't take care of myself. I, I, I can't do self-care. Yeah. And my people show up for me. Um, my daughter shows up for me. And when she can't do self-care when I haven't heard from her in a minute and I'm looking at Facebook and I'm seeing the posts that are, you know, just dreary. I'm like, okay, something's up. Let me call my boo-boo and see what's going on. Right. <laughs> so it's like, um, having people to have your back is like super important when you actually don't have the ability, um, to do self-care. Um, so it's, to me, it's a combination of community care, self-care, if you have the privilege enough to have a community that can do that for you, because I know a lot of people don't have Unfortunately, that. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's, I mean, in, in that way, that's how it shows up for me in terms of like how I care for myself, how I don't deny myself my care, uh, how I, honesty too. Wow. Like another thing around honesty, <laughs> it's like you truly, or for me, I truly feel like I have to be honest about what is going on in my body. 
and also things come up for me in terms of weakness. Uh, I oftentimes feel really weak, dumb, stupid. And these are words that I don't even like using for other people. Yeah. I don't use stupid and dumb. Yeah. And for myself, I use that. I'm like, I feel stupid. I feel dumb. I feel like I can't even handle, you know. Simple tasks. Right. right. Yeah. I feel that um, way too. Like, I'm just a failure. Like, yeah. I couldn't even just go to the doctor's appointment. Like, I had to cancel. Right. I have to stay in bed. Like, what's wrong with me? Like, I'm in, like, there, um, there were times where, or, and it still happens, you know, like, it's like, I'm in bed for three days. I haven't washed. I haven't yeah, I have done anything. I haven't brushed my teeth in a week or something. Right. <laughs> but a part of that is, for me, is that, I say to myself, this is okay. Right now, it's okay um, that, um, that I can express this to the people that are in my life to say, I'm not having a good day. And what that means, right? Because some people actually want people to come. Okay, I'm coming over. I'm helping you, right? And other people are like, I don't need you to come. Just talk. Just talk to me over the phone or check in with me in a couple of days, right? So it's, it's really, again, it goes back to, which is so goddamn hard, tapping into yourself and really trying to come up with ways okay what would be helpful for me what could i convey to my partner lover friend which is hard because that makes you vulnerable so vulnerable and 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 you actually have to like formulate this is the plan like this is what i need from you and then wait to see if they will be able to give it yes. to you and not judge you mm -hmm. right so hard and it's and it's it's the journey right because sometimes you will meet people who are like, oh, come on, get over it. it. It's You can get up out of bed. Come on, come on, right? And then other people will absolutely be there for you because they may understand or they have experience with someone else or they too are going through that. So it, it is a mixed bag and it's it's the it's the journey that we all have to go on and take the chance, oh, again, which is so goddamn hard because it's like I'm being judged. I'm a it's failure. a never-ending journey. But, it's like yeah, yeah but it's it's like that was that that greek myth i forgot the name of that guy who's constantly pushing that ball up the oh, hill yes, just yes. like a roll down and he's pushing like that's just his fate that's what mental illness is no matter what you do like you can get to the top of the hill you could be at a good point in your life but eventually that ball's gonna roll right back down and you have to push it right back up mm. but when you find people or have people in your life that support you and love you and everything you really need to hold on to them and you know show them love right back too because mm. having it is hard too, you know, being on the outside, dealing with it is hard as well. Right. So, you know, you always have to make sure you're caring for them as well. But that's a good point that you're saying too. But also coming to terms with what you're able to do for somebody else, right? Because what they give you may not be the same thing you yeah. give them. And I learned that the hard way, right? Because sometimes people do nice things for you and you want to reciprocate that exactly the same way. And sometimes you just don't or you can't, right? <laughs> like... Um, I'm a type of person that the way I show love is giving time to people, cooking somebody a meal, um, listening to someone, having them over, you know, like it's about more quality time with me. And then there are other people that they can buy, find the perfect gift to give you. And it's like they, they have a gift to give gifts, right? <laughs> and it's like, it makes you feel good. I suck at that stuff. So I can't reciprocate that to somebody else. I can do something else, right? I think I'm good at so, both. Yeah. I suck. You are. You give me good gifts. Um, but I'm, you know, like you have to really think about what do I have the capacity for? So when you're, when I'm navigating stuff with people that I love, I can say, I can't do that. I don't, I don't My have limits. the bandwidth to do that because then, and this is through trial and error. Of course, I've done this through trial and error. Like I didn't know this. And then I would let people down because they were there for me in such a good way. And then it, it seems like I just let them down. It's never right. intentional. It's just, you know, our abilities, I mm -hmm. guess, or lack of ability. Mm -hmm. And I think these days people are talking about mental illness in a bigger way, which is really good. It's a, a lot less shame around it um, and how to navigate those things. And I have a group of people in my life that, you know, we could easily say I'm having a bad day, um, check in on me or, you know, whatever it is that we need. Um, and, I, and I have my people, like I said, I, I have my friends that if I haven't heard from them for a, a little while, like... I, uh, we know each other's patterns and we could really be a support. So it is the most vulnerable, one of the most vulnerable things to do to like let someone into your freaking head mm -hmm. and, and your spirit. And so it's very, very, very vulnerable. And it is a journey for anyone to take on their own at their own pace. Um, but that's but that's the stuff that comes up for me in terms of how I navigate relationships and 
uh, my mental illness and trauma. Okay. It's the same. I try to, um, my big thing is working on um, dealing with it alone too. Mm-hmm. When I have nobody, I try to, I don't know if it's like just me being like a fiercely independent person, but I know I definitely, the biggest thing for me is trying to find skills to do it on my own. When there's no medication, when there's no therapist, when there's no friends, when if you're busy or you're like you're in a country where I can't mm. talk to you or something like I'm my biggest thing is doing that because mm. you know you're born alone you die alone there's going to be moments where you're completely alone and I have to be able to take care of myself in those moments when mm. I can't lean on anybody mm. so I know for me that goes into you know my spiritual stuff yes. doing arts and crafts watching cartoons yeah things like that I do little stuff to mm. help brighten my day you know? Oh, that's a good thing. Like, what do we do when we're feeling like that? So for me, I sometimes I just don't bath, or bathe, or brush my teeth or anything for a couple of days, and I have to allow myself to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, junk food, comfort food. Um, there are moments where I do that, and I don't feel guilty about it. I am going to do it. I'm going to eat the junk food, and I'm okay with it. Uh, and my spiritual practice is everything. Uh, yeah. Ritual and spiritual practice is everything. It has gotten me through so, so much, <laughs> yeah. some intense times. So every single morning I wake up, I do ritual. Every morning, every month, um, every season, every year, <laughs> I do ritual um, as a part of our Taino spirituality um, and our African spirituality, um, combining those two. So that has been major. So helpful, yeah. life-changing, everything. Yeah, arts and crafts. Oh, art, like your own art therapy is just like amazing. My, Writing, <laughs> right? My whole place is covered in paintings and like... <laughs> glitter and wallpaper and little cutouts of stencils like I have art everywhere yeah. um, and of course you can't deny therapy therapy works for some people it doesn't work for others and it really depends on the good relationship you have with the therapist if you have health insurance yeah yeah it so many really factors. tricky really really tricky right um, and there's a very as far as I know there is such a um, a need um, for a POC, people of color who are therapists, queer therapists, women. trans therapists, women therapists. Like, that's what I want. And we it's want really to be hard. represented in our doctors. Yeah, yeah. And it's hard to find that. So when you do find it, it's beautiful. And if they listen, it's beautiful. So I think... I think navigating our mental health is like a multi-prong approach. It's right? all trial and error. Yeah, it's it's a lot of different things, trying different things, and understanding, like you're saying, that boulder. That I think that's the way I see my trauma too. Like there are times when I'm doing fantastic, and I could talk about being a CSA survivor with no problem, and then I go do a talk, and it's, I'm yeah. like fucked up for like a week, two weeks, three weeks. I'm crying all the time, and. You know, that's just kind of the waves that we go through. But one thing I would say is that throughout the years, the way I deal with trauma and mental illness has gotten better and better. And the times that it's really bad is lessened or shortened, I should yeah, say. And less self-destructive, too. Yes. Oh, a yeah, lot of self-destructive self-harming. behaviors are completely done now. That's wonderful. Yes. Wonderful. And that's a, I know that's another huge thing, especially in the PLC community, that we don't talk about is self-harm. Mm. All right. So that's another episode. Yes, <laughs> really. So, I mean, I hope that that was helpful in us sharing our practices for, like, trying to have healthy relationships or how we've done it. Um, and, you know, doing it in monogamous relationships and polyamory and kinky relationships. Um, but it really, I think it boils down to it's time being kind to yourself if you can, because I know that is hard to do sometimes. Um, Give and, yourself a break. Yes. And just trial and error but really trying different things that might help whether it might be community talking one-on-one with your person talking um, to your pets plants oh, take yes, a walk pets 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 are beautiful if you have they them. will save your life yes um, <laughs> so a lot of different things so i hope some of this was helpful for you all um please don't forget to send in questions uh, we want to know yes. what you want to talk about what do you want to grapple with uh, what are you uh, curious about so let us know thank you for supporting uh, pure thank love you. all right bye bye Thank you.